Hello and welcome to G Zero World. I'm Ian Bremmer, and today my conversation with President Ivan Duque comes at a pivotal moment. It's called toad swallowing. That's how former Colombian President Juan Manuel Santos described peace negotiations with a leftist guerrilla insurgency best known by its Spanish abbreviation, FARC. Santos was referring to the concessions made to bring FARC rebels to the bargaining table. One of the bitterest pills, biggest toads, from the government perspective was amnesty and a FARC springboard into politics. Former rebels were afforded a handful of seats in the Colombian Senate, a handful more in the lower chamber, and for the first time, an official voice in the Colombian government. Now, in a country where up to 60% of residents report being victimized or are related to someone victimized by the conflict, seeing former rebels wear their shiny new congressional pins is more like swallowing a moose or a wombat larger than a toad, but still, they did it. After five decades, a quarter million dead on both sides, and a drug trade that gave guerrilla fighters an endless supply of cash, the government under Santos decided they had enough. No matter how many battlefield victories he could rack up, absolute victory against the FARC was not in the cards. So he made his concessions for peace. Chapter closed, right? Are Colombia's FARC rebels returning to war? The members of the group say they are taking up arms again. Es la continuación de la lucha guerrillera en respuesta a la traición del Estado a los acuerdos de paz de La Habana. First of all, the FARC is a political party now. The vast majority of its fighters have put down their weapons, and those guys you just saw in that last video aren't even really FARC anymore. They're former FARC rebels who've now started their own thing, which they are still calling the FARC. It's confusing, but what matters is this new group says the government has not kept up its end of the bargain, and they're not the only ones. I'm talking about political incorporation, amnesty, and drug and land reforms, and they have a point. After three years, about a third of the peace deal's 578 provisions still haven't been put in place. Another third have been implemented only partially, particularly when it comes to land reform. And for a Marxist group founded on a desire to defend landless peasants, that's more than just a little toad to swallow. Pero el Estado no ha cumplido ni con la más importante de sus obligaciones, que es garantizar la vida de sus ciudadanos. President Duque was elected on a get-tough campaign to revamp the old peace accord. And his government says that grainy YouTube video you just saw probably wasn't even filmed in Colombia, but rather across the border in Venezuela. And if that's true, it would support accusations that Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro is involved. That's hardly a stretch. For decades, Venezuela provided the old FARC a safe haven and has since sheltered other Colombian cartels and rebel groups in exchange for a bit of muscle along the border. But the Venezuelan economy is collapsing. Thousands of refugees are packing up for Colombia and Maduro's very legitimacy is in question. Does that present an opportunity to finally get rid of a big reason these rebel groups could hang on for all these years? President Duque seems to think so. On the sidelines of this year's United Nations General Assembly, he called for coordinated international sanctions, put the nail in the coffin of the Maduro government. But I'll let him explain for himself. Please welcome my featured guest, Colombian President, Yvonne Duque. 